Hi, I'm Dan, and today we're going to start from the beginning, explore the terminal, the, your directory structures, and sort of moving around and creating files. The terminal lives on your computer inside your utilities folder. You can find this in the applications folder. And if we scroll down to the bottom, utilities, and then terminal. And this is your macOS terminal. If you want to keep it in the terminal, then you can right click the icon, move into options and click keep in dock. Let's compare the two folders. So at the moment, we are still in our home directory. By default, whenever you open your terminal, you end up in your home directory. And you can see the finder view here. So how do you see the same thing that you see in terminal in finder? Well, the first command I want to tell you about is the ls command or list. And you can see there, you've got the same folders, desktop, documents, downloads, movies, uh, music, pictures, and public. And in the finder, it's very easy to move around. You just double click things. Well, how do we do that in the terminal? Well, there's a command called cd or change directory. And it's that simple. Uh, do we have any folders that have got anything in them? Okay, we've got the, pic uh, the photo library in, uh, in our pictures folder. So to go back a directory, we type cd dot dot, which is the, the, pre the parent directory. The directory you're currently in is always called dot, which is why dot dot is, goes back one. Alternatively, you could type the tilde, which is your home directory, to go home. So let's go into the pictures folder. And oops, type ls, and then you can see the same file there. And we'll go back up. You can also use the tab to sort of help autocomplete. So when I typed previously CD pictures, I typed picture or pick and then hit tab to autocomplete. If I'd actually typed DO, that could be documents or downloads. So if I hit tab, I can see that it's actually giving me both choices. And then I just need to type slightly more information and then hit tab again. And I just hit control C to cancel that command. So we've got CD, CD dot dot, CD dot and tilde. If you ever want to know where you are in the file system, you can type PWD, which is present working directory. And then you can see that that's the, we're in the users folder and inside my actual user. And in your user folder, we've got very specific folders. And these are obviously your home directory, which is tilde or slash users slash, in my case, Daniel Platt. Uh, you've got an applications folder sometimes when you install applications for your own user and not globally on the system. You've got the desktop folder, which is everything on your desktop. It appears in the folder. Documents, downloads, movies. There is a hidden folder in here called library. And if you were to go to finder, click go and hold the alt key, then you will see it. But this is just your home directory. You've got other folders on your system of note. So if we type cd slash, which is the very root of your file system, which is, if we look here, it's here. And we've got our applications, library, system, and the users folder, which we mentioned earlier. The system, you shouldn't be able to make any changes to because that's macOS's system directory. Uh, the library folder is a, a place that applications can store data that's kind of global for everybody on your on your computer. 
There is a f another folder in here that you can't see called slash volumes. And we can see this on the terminal. It's this. That is where macOS will store drives that are mounted. So I've got a drive there called Final Cut Projects. That will exist inside there. So, same with the Macintosh hard drive. So if we had a quick look in there, you can see them. But we've got some folders in the terminal that don't exist in macOS. Why is that? Well, the macOS is hiding any sort of Linux, Unix type files from us because it rightly or wrongly believes that we don't care about them or we don't need to know about them. And to be fair, I think that's accurate for most people. Uh, your, the finder would get very cluttered if you saw all the files that are hidden around. So of note, you've got the bin directory, which includes sort of commands that you can run on the command line. And we've also got USR local. And that is where I install or brew installs or any other application will install stuff that is to be used on your terminal, but you want to share it around. It's kind of a safe location that every other folder kind of is owned by Mac OS and it could cause problems if you make changes. The USR local is a safe location that Apple tends to leave for other developers to use. Okay, so let's go back to our home directory. And let's have a look at the desktop. A few things you should know as the basics is creating folders and creating files. Uh, creating files, no. Creating folders is straightforward. We've got MK, make, and then directory. And we can type, we can create a directory called hello. And you can see there that it shows up very quickly. We've also got RM, which is remove directory. So if I, oh, ah. Like every application now requires permissions to access various parts of your system. So we were able to create something in the desktop folder, but to then make a change, the terminal is now asking for permission to access the desktop folder. So let's allow that and then we can remove it. We can also create files. Uh, if we just want to create an empty file, then we can do touch and that just sort of like i mean it literally is that it's it's the mac os or the terminal touching a file if it doesn't exist it gets created if it does exist then it updates the last access time to now so let's touch a file and then you can see it's just created if you want to create a file and put content in it then we've got nano And that's just a, a very basic text editor on the command line. And you can just type in there, press enter. You've got the arrow keys to move around. You can also see at the bottom here, you've got various control keys. So control, and that's what that little hat symbol means. Control X is the control key plus exit. And that'll ask you to save the file You've also got paginate with control Y and control V to go up and down pages at a time. Uh, control W is to search for something inside the file. Control O is to write out the file, uh, to write the contents. If it's a new file, it'll ask for the file name. If you press control C, then you cancel it. If I was to press Control X, it knows that the file has been changed, but I haven't saved it. So it's going to ask us 
do you want to cancel or do you want to save it or not save it? If you say no, then you'll exit to the terminal and nothing will be in there. So let's press that, press Y, it'll confirm the file name and then it'll save. And then you can see oh, in here the contents of the file. It's very straightforward, handy. If you wanted to copy a file, then it's very simple. You type CP for copy, the name of the file, and then the name of the, the new file. We've also got move, which is basically rename, but as well as rename, you can move it to a different folder. So it's kind of a, a little bit more advanced than just dragging and dropping and rename and finder, because you can do it all in one command. So, hello world, and let's just rename it to test. You do need to be careful with move because, for example, if I change the contents of this to test, save it, we now have two files one with hello world and one with test in it. If we were to do move test into hello, what do you think will happen? Well, you're gonna lose one of the files. And what's happened is the original file has been lost and this file has been put in its place. You've gotta be careful with this in terminal because this all bypasses the bin or the trash. So that original hello world file has now been lost forever. If you want to delete a file, then we've got rm, which is remove, and then we can type the name of the file. We can also create lots of folders inside folders. So let's do hello world dan, and that dash p is an argument to make directory. And it's saying, let's, when you're creating the folder, create the parents as well, because without it, it will just say, hello does not exist. So if we run that, we'll see hello world and Dan, and it will take us all the way down. And we can do the same sort of thing with the files. So if I was to do touch Hello world, Dan, morning.txt. And that just allows us to create files in locations that we don't have to be in the same directory to create the file. What if we wanted to remove all of this? You can't use rmdir because it needs the directory to be empty. The way round it is to type remove dash r hello. Now this is very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing or make a mistake. Because this will recursively delete everything. So if I wanted to delete the world folder and everything in it, then this is what that command will do. If for some crazy reason, I have typed space instead of a forward slash, then something might go horribly wrong. And if you look at that message, it kind of looks like it didn't do anything, but it did because it will accept everything, every argument, so hello and world as two separate arguments. And what it's done is it's actually deleted the hello folder, even though I didn't necessarily intend for that to happen. Oh, uh, let's make the directory again. The way around that is I would pretty much always quote what you're trying to remove, because that will allow it to consider the whole thing as a single argument. 
and now it says hello world, no such file or directory. There is one final thing I want to cover, and it's a little bit advanced, but if we happen to be inside this folder, if you try to remove a directory that you're in, then th weird things can happen. You're not allowed to remove your current directory. So if I was to say parent directory remove Dan, now what that's done is it's removed the directory. So in theory, if we go into here, there's nothing. But we're currently in the Dan folder. You can see it here. So what's going on? This is one cool feature about Unix, is that you can remove files and folders that you're currently using. And what happens is it's, it's keeping tabs of who's using what, and that folder will disappear once the last person or thread or task has stopped using it. So if I was to go up a directory, then that folder will no longer exist and I can't go back because it doesn't exist. But I was able to change out of it because it knew what the parent of that directory was. But what happens if the directory you're in gets deleted and so does its parent? For example, if I was to type Oh, now it's on the desktop, isn't it? If I was to remove the hello world, the hello and the world directories. So everything's gone. Well, I'm still in the hello world directory. But if I type CD and go up a directory, something weird happens. Because the directory it was in that it could see no longer exists. So it has absolutely no idea where I was on the file system, only that I'm in a directory, which is why it's signified as dot. Normally any, any directory will be a parent of slash or the root directory, but this isn't. The only way out of this is to change directory to somewhere else. You can't do relative directories because you can, apparently. <laughs> I think if I deleted, if I was three levels deep, then that wouldn't have worked. But normally what you have to do is type a, an absolute directory, which is anything stuck with a slash or using the tilde to take you back to the, your home directory. If you'd like to know more about this, then check out my book, Tweak Your Mac Terminal, available from A-Press. In the book, we start off with the Mac Terminal basics and then go all the way to more advanced topics as well as being able to test a website on your local machine. It's a very good book for people that are not very technical and want to know more, or people that are trying to become web developers. So check out the book today. Alternatively, check out one of my other videos on the macOS terminal.